The Jake Asman Show will begin shortly. Thanks to all these great Patreon members who help support the show. Get your super chats ready. Jake will be here in just a moment. If you love the New York Jets, this is the place to be. And now, the Jake Asman Show. Stop me if you've heard this before. Colin Cowherd said something really dumb about Aaron Rodgers and the Jets. We'll talk about it. It's the Jake Asman Show. Let's hit it and get it started. Man, our Jets are primed for a historic season. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of hungry, little T. I'd take like a bite or something. Do I have to rate it like one? It's good. <laughs> this one got the deal sign right here. We bleed Jets green each and every day. This is not the same old Jet. We have Garrett Wilson. Let's go. We have Bruce Hall. Please subscribe and hit the like button below. Super Jet, baby. Cut the line. We have Sauce Gardner. We have Quinn and Williams. The Jet bandwagon is loaded. Now it's time to talk all things New York Jets. It's the Jake Asman Show. Ah, here we go. Welcome in, Jet fans. Show number two on the day. If you missed it, show number one featured an awesome chat with Matt O'Leary. So check that out if you want our thoughts on a bunch of different Jet-related topics. In today's show, we start off by talking about some dumb bleep that Colin Cowherd uttered during a recent podcast appearance. So they were discussing the Jets' win total, and Colin Cowherd podcast said that the nine and a half win total for the Jets is way too high. Not only are they not making the playoffs, but Aaron Rodgers is just not as committed as past older quarterbacks, which, by the way, makes no sense considering the fact Aaron Rodgers had a record recovery from a torn Achilles and was voted most inspirational by his own teammates because of said recovery and commitment to the team. I'm going to play the full clip, and then I'll give you some more thoughts as we completely debunk a silly narrative that keeps being said by people in the media, and it's irresponsible. It's like people don't pay any attention to what has actually happened this offseason with the Jets. But without further ado, here is the latest laughable opinion by Colin Cowherd. I also think Aaron isn't quite as committed as a lot of the young guys that are really bigger, stronger. And I and I think the only way to be good is sort of to be focused like Kirk Cousins later or obsessed like Brady. I don't think there's a way to be casually. And, and Aaron, you know, I've heard this from multiple people. Aaron, he's not going to sit and watch game film all weekend. That's not what he's going to do as a personality. He's going to read some things and listen to music and do his own thing. He is not Brady on the film. He's not Peyton. That's not, he's not Breeze as a workaholic. Aaron has is one of those guys it's almost like, well, because he had more physical capability than those guys. It's like a rock star. You know, the the Bonos and the bands, edges that have survived, didn't have long periods of drug use. Like they took care of their body. They yeah. partied, but they have aged very well. <laughs> the bands that didn't haven't. Like, I think Aaron didn't quite take the same level of care. And I think he's aging faster than other guys. Where does this BS come from? Seriously. Where does this BS come from? How could you say that with a straight face? Seriously. Aaron Rodgers isn't aging like Brady Manning. Aaron Rodgers is the second oldest quarterback to ever win an MVP in NFL history. Forget quarterback. He's the second oldest player to ever win an MVP in NFL history. And as Nicole Essler on Twitter even pointed out, the rock star analogy is terrible, too. Has Cowherd not heard of the Rolling Stones or Aerosmith? I mean, God, man, I shouldn't take the bait. But when you just say things because you're biased against one particular person, it needs to be called out. Colin's got a huge platform. He's the same guy that a month ago said this about Aaron Rodgers. Forget about his vaccine and political opinions. Aaron's football IQ isn't very high. Aaron's football IQ isn't very high. 
Aaron's football IQ isn't very high. I mean, it's a joke, and people take what he says as if it matters. It doesn't. Stop. He hates Aaron Rodgers, has a clear vendetta against Aaron Rodgers. He also doesn't like the Jets because he was a Darnold lover, and guess what happened? Sam Darnold ended up being terrible. All right, despite the fact that Colin Cowherd has tweets and did shows guaranteeing the Jets would be in the 2020 AFC Championship game with Adam Gase and Sam Darnold. And Jet fans are clueless. I mean, they're dopes. They don't know anything. This is a really good hire. Gase is a great coach. Gase is a great coach. Okay, Adam Gase is Kyle Shanahan before Kyle Shanahan. Gase is a great coach. I mean, it's just laughable. The opinions people have about Aaron Rodgers. You know, like he's some sort of like boogeyman, bad guy, doesn't care about football. If you know anything about the guy, if you just talk to any of his teammates, if you talk to people who don't even really love him, that just covered him. Guys on the Jets beat had nothing but good things to say about him. And they're the most cynical people ever. The people that have been on the beat for 10, 15, 20, 30 years. I mean, what a joke. What a joke to say Aaron Rodgers is not as committed when he won an MVP as the second oldest player to ever do it is a joke. He was practicing with the Jets in December. If they were mathematically alive, I have it from people on the record. C.J. Mosley. Ah, look at that interview back in January, Colin, that he was playing. He was going to give it a go, not at 100% because of how badly he wanted to come back. That Rodgers felt like he let the Jets and the fans down by getting hurt, which is ridiculous, but you appreciate his commitment. Did he not care? Was he not committed when he gave back $35 million? Took the largest pay cut in team sports history? How come that's not discussed? Instead, it's, oh, he's a bad guy. He's this, he's that. And people don't know the facts. And also, forget about his vaccine opinions or political opinions. Why is that even relevant? Even if you're going to try to insult his football intelligence, which is a joke because he's one of probably the five or ten greatest quarterbacks of all time, his opinions on non-football things should not factor in your opinion on football things but both are screwed up in this case with Cowherd not as committed as past older quarterbacks it's everything but that did you watch hard knocks did you see the fact his own teammates voted him most inspirational he could have mailed it in and went back to California and been away from the Jets the entire season he didn't he didn't he got back on the practice field in December he didn't have to do that He didn't have to have the surgery to try and come back sooner. He did. I mean, he's not as committed as past older quarterbacks. Look, you want to say the Jets aren't going to make the playoffs? Fine. I don't care. Right? They haven't made the playoffs since 2010. They're not going to get the benefit of that. I won't fight any media member or any fan of an opponent, you know, an opponent team opposition that says they're not going to make the playoffs. But saying that nine and a half is too high. I mean, they won 7-10 and 10 with Zach Wilson, Tim Boyle, and Trevor Simeon. None of them are probably going to be on week one rosters at this point. Seven games with that. Beat three playoff teams. Beat the Bills. Beat the Texans. Beat the Eagles. Beat Belichick in his last ever game. Nine and a half wins. You want to tell me that's too high? Fine. That's a real football opinion. Everyone's going to get hurt. It's the Jets. They suck. Whatever. But when you say... That Aaron Rodgers is not committed or not as committed as past older quarterbacks. And then you say he doesn't, he hasn't aged, and you use a rock star analogy that's also trash. You lose me there. You lose me there. And the bias is there. I mean, when you start talking about Aaron Rodgers not having a high football IQ, you're just saying things that you don't truly believe. Because you can't win four MVPs and win a Super Bowl or have the greatest touchdown to interception ratio in the history of the position or have the highest active quarterback rating out of any player in the league. That includes Mahomes, by the way, if you don't have high football IQ. Silly. And if you believe that Aaron Rodgers somehow is not committed to the Jets, you haven't been paying attention. Or you're just being ignorant on purpose. Because you can't get back $35 million. You can't be voted most inspirational by your own teammates. If you're not committed to your job and to your profession. And this offseason alone, 
all Aaron Rodgers has said is that he intends to play two, three, maybe four more years, that he feels like his body's in a great shape, that he's totally redefined his diet, his nutrition, that he feels like he's in a better spot now than he's ever been in. But this is just pure ignorance. And then it gets put out there, and he's got a huge following, and everyone continues to take the bait. Like, if Rodgers is some bad guy, the Jets are this dysfunctional mess, and they're not, and it drives me nuts. I did a show on ESPN Radio the other night, and the question was, which team is more dysfunctional? Which team is more of a bleep show? The Jets or the Mets? And I'm thinking to myself, how, how, how is this even a real question? The Jets were a quarterback away from being a good team last year. Let's call it for what it is. They won seven games. They're covered like they won two. The fact that the Jets are even being lumped in with the Mets, who have no playoff aspirations, who are all about the future and not this year, is a joke. The Jets have a top five defense. They just added Hassan Reddick to it. They have a elite number one receiver in Garrett Wilson, an elite, maybe best running back in football type of player in Brees Hall. They added Mike Williams. They added three bona fide starters, including an all pro, to their offensive line. They have the 10th pick in the draft, and we're going to talk about the Jets like they're the Carolina Panthers. We're going to talk about the Jets like they're the Giants. How come the Giants never get covered the way the Jets do? Explain how. I don't care that they won Super Bowls. Recent years, the New York Giants have been just as big of a bleep show as the Jets. You want to say the Giants made the playoffs more recently? All the power to them. Sure. And they deserve credit for that. But the disparity in coverage, I'm not saying the Jets should be covered the same way as the Giants, but that Wink and Martindale story with the Giants swept right underneath the rug. With the Jets, we got 30 sources in the athletic doing a tell-all. Now all of a sudden, there's no more leaks. Gee, I wonder why. It's almost like the Jets got rid of the people that were leaking, running their mouths. But, I mean, this is just laughable. You, you want to say the Jets won't be a playoff team? That's fine. You want to say they won't win 10 games? That's fine. But when you come out and you say that the guy is not as committed as past older quarterbacks, that's a joke. All right? And I'm sorry, you can't tell me there's not a bias there when stuff like this has been said recently. Forget about his vaccine and political opinions. Aaron's football IQ isn't very high. Aaron's football IQ isn't very high. Aaron's football IQ isn't very high. Colin, your football IQ isn't very high. What a joke. What a joke. I mean, (laughs) embarrassing. Comments, questions, we'll take your calls on this Gus Buster Umbrella hotline. The link is pinned. You could become an As Maniac by hitting that join button, or you could get really lucky because someone out there wants you to have a membership. They want to give you the gift of being an As Maniac, and that is what the Salty Teacher has done for the following five people that's right five memberships have been gifted hit it show me the money show me the money 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 here we go xavier bradley jeremy dan splanning rainy martinez and joey r you were just gifted an as maniac membership by the salty teacher well done well done by the salty teacher man i'm fired up on this coward stuff what a joke an absolute joke All right, here we go. Comments, questions, of course, your super chats as well. We'll always cut the line and go first. Let's go to Rob the Jet fan. He's first up on our show. Rob, how are you? Hey, how's the moving going, Jake? Uh, It's been tough, but we're we're making progress. I got to get more lamps here. You can notice I'm a little in the I'm in the dark. We got the studio lighting is not where it needs to be. But you like the apartment overall? Yeah, very good so far. You're just not to put your address out there. You're more on the upper side of New York. I am where you need me to be, Rob. How about that? Sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, going to this guy, dude, this uh, cow turd here. I mean, he's just too much. I mean, come on. This guy is just sitting here. The same guy who told us that Gaze was a good coach and us Jet fans are dopes. I mean, how much credence can you put into this guy's work? I mean, I don't know what he's trying to do. If He's trying to fire us up get a reaction because maybe he needs better ratings. I I have no idea. But how the heck can you say that Aaron Rodgers is not committed to the Jets? He gave back $35 million. He got into phenomenal shape. He was ready to play 
if the Jets had won one more game towards the end of the stretch, everyone knew that he was out there practicing seven on sevens. This does not sound like someone who's not committed. And what does he do afterwards? He apologizes for the shitty season that the Jets have. He's getting ready, uh, calling people to come to the Jets. He's already said that he might play two, three, maybe even four years. This doesn't sound like a guy who's not committed to winning or to the Jets. So I don't know what the heck is this guy's talking about. Maybe he fell on his head. Uh, maybe he tripped on the subway. I, I don't know what's going on with this turd. But, I mean, he, he's way out of bounds with this, and it really pisses off our Jet fans. We're pissed off about this guy. He needs to shut the hell up. Yeah, Too much. Just, it's just not true, Rob. It's just not like you, you want to say the Jets won't make the playoffs. You got questions about some of the players they added, questions about the coach. Fine. When you start talking about the guy's commitment, when, like, like there's not an opinion there. Like, it is a fact. The man is committed to the Jets. Ask his teammates who voted the most inspirational for his remarkable recovery to try and do something that's never been done before. Or his leadership. Like, you actually saw it. It was on Hard Knocks. It was on TV. We all watched it. Aaron Rodgers' approval rating had never been higher than it was that summer a year ago. He was a great teammate. Remember the clip on Hard Knocks where Al Woods takes the mic and goes, man, the media's got it all wrong about this guy right here. Like, you saw it. So, it, to me, it's just, it's a shame, man. Like, Aaron Rodgers doesn't need me to defend him. But I, I just get so annoyed because you really see how uh, the media just looks to drive and divide, man. And I'm in the media, so obviously I, I come at it with a unique perspective. But that's just how I do it. I won't say things I know just aren't true. I'll be wrong. I give opinions all the time that are wrong. I I, I thought Zach Wilson was going to be a good quarterback. But I, I just I can't say things that I know are factually incorrect. I can't. There's no way. It's just it's wild to me, man. R and R writes in a a tote before dinner plus Jake equals party. Hey, amen, R R. Hey, if you're tuned in live right now, hit the like button. If you're not tuned in live, please still hit the like button. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. We'll get back to your calls coming up and the more of your super chats. Today's show is sponsored by Circo Resort and Casino. That's right, people. We're headed to Vegas. At the end of this month, we'll be live for the entire NFL draft on the channel. Our first ever mega cast. Special guests are going to join us. Ticket giveaways, memorabilia giveaways. I got something cool for Garrett Wilson fans out there. I'm partnering up with my friends over at ESPN New York. So stay tuned for some details on that. But we're going to be live from Circa Resort and Casino the Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of the NFL draft. It, I mean, it's going to be amazing. We're going to be reacting in real time to everything that happens. The Jets obviously have the 10th pick. They have Mr. Irrelevant as well. So we're going to be live for as many consecutive hours in a, a days in a row as I've ever done in the history of this YouTube channel. So it's going to be great. If you've never been to Circa, it is sports heaven. Circa, uh, CircaLasVegas.com. Just check it out. They have the largest indoor and outdoor sports book. It's never too early to book your stay. Football season is going to sneak up on us. Get there this summer even as well. They have the football contest that opened at the end of August for the Mega Millions, Circa Survivor, Circa Millions. I mean, I could talk about Circa all day, and over the next month, you're going to hear me talk a lot about Circa. Shout out to Circa for coming back on and sponsoring our draft show. All right, more of your comments, questions, super chats. Kinu is up next on the Gus Buster Hotline. What's up, Kinu? Jake, that Colin Coward dude is a joke. Um, all I'm going to say is this. There's a tweet saved in my phone from a while ago from Colin Coward. It reads something like this. Adam Gase, Sam Darnold, Greg Williams. Where can I buy my AFC Championship game tickets at MetLife Stadium? But don't forget, Jake, it's Aaron Rodgers that has the low football IQ. That's right. That's all I got to say. Forget about Aaron's opinions on the vaccine or his political opinions. His right. football IQ. That's the problem mm -hmm. here. Yeah, that's the problem. I mean, the guy, the guy that thinks Adam Gase and Sam Darnold are going to go to an AFC Championship game, very high IQ. But the guy that's going to go down as one of the greatest football minds ever, very low IQ, right? It's, Makes no sense. It's wild, man. I look, at the, the, the bottom line is this, and I see Alan nails it with the comment. The Jets need to win to shut these dudes up, but they'll find something else. They'll move the goalposts. They will. But, man, will we Jet fans be attacking everybody if this team is good this year? Oh, we're coming for blood. We 
a coming for everyone if this team could truly be a good football team. But I, I'm just tired of the attacks on Rod. You want to criticize him for football things or things that are, you know, in in reason, fine. But when we say he's not committed as older as some of the other older quarterbacks, when I, I mean, all I need to tell you is he's the second oldest player to ever win an MVP. He's not committed, though. Please. I, I just I can't. More of your calls right now. Gary's up next. Hello, Gary. Who Rogers was thirty eight when he won the MVP? I, I'm I'm guessing the only one that could be older is is Brady. But who won Brady, the, Brady, Brady won an MVP? I think at age forty, his last MVP or forty one. Pretty, pretty pretty good company, right? I, the, the two best quarterbacks I, I've seen that I'm old enough to see. I'm not really old enough for Montana, so those are the two best quarterbacks I've ever seen. So it's pretty yeah. good company. Look, cop. Colin Coward doesn't know anything about football. He's not a Jets re- beat reporter. He has no idea what he's saying. He's just saying it to get a reaction. I, I love Jet fans. I think it's the best – Jet fans and Nick fans, which, which are largely the same people, I truly believe is the best fan base in sports. There's no one more loyal than them. And they're hostile, and, and, and they're volatile, and they're emotional. He's just doing it to get a response. He knows what he's not saying is true, but he knows it's going to get their blood boiling, Right. I got an interesting perspective from being in the boxing world. I've sat on both sides. I've sat with the media and I've sat on the other side, you know, in the dressing rooms, getting fighters ready. The media, most, and they're smart ones and there's good ones in every sport, but most of them are just fans. They, 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 they like some, they like their team and they dislike other teams. Like you think you're getting this really well-informed, non-biased opinion and you're not. You're getting what Callan Coward likes and doesn't like. And look, obviously he's done a good job, I guess. I, I don't like him, but he's got a massive fan base for years over multiple stations, right? He's had a 20-year career, I would I would imagine. Oh, uh, look, so, it, this is nothing against his career. His career speaks for itself. He, the, the guy makes reportedly six to eight million dollars a year. It's just I, I think it's very disingenuous when it, what he says when it comes to the Jets specifically. Like this is a Jet show. When I hear things about the Jets that I just know like are just not true. I'm not. I'm going to use my platform to push push back against it. You know what I mean? Like to me, it's like you want to criticize the Jets and say they're not going to make the playoffs. That's fine. When you start saying things that are just factually incorrect, that's where I think it's it's out of it's out of line. It's out of line. But he's, it's it's the same thing that Hawk does in the Discord and in the chat with Zach Wilson. He's doing it. He doesn't even believe it. He's just doing it to get a reaction, and then he gets. It I think he does time. believe it though. I think Hawk is that delusional. He doesn't believe everything. He believes a lot of it though, man. Because I, I go back a, a long time with Hawk, Gary. You, I know you joined the show. I guess within the last year, Hawk's been a Zach Wilson truther for years already. If you put uh, Hawk on Truth Serum and hooked him up to a lie detector test, said yes or no, do you think Zach Wilson is a good quarterback? He would say yes and pass. I can't. I can't. I. He might. I, you know I'm telling you. I do. I just he can't might see anyone actually thinking that. But I'm telling you. I, Watch out, Gary. I'm telling you. He might. Anthony writes it. He's got a super chat for us. Colin has been getting on the Jets and Aaron every week for five weeks now on his podcast. Yeah, every, uh, and, and and I haven't talked about the other things he has said. I've let it go for the last four weeks. This I just felt like needed to be addressed. Was egregious. All right. I'm sorry. You can't tell me there's no bias when you said this earlier this offseason already. Forget about his vaccine and political opinions. Aaron's football IQ isn't very high. Aaron's football IQ isn't very high. Aaron's football IQ isn't very high. I mean, come on. Uh, It's just, (laughs) what else is there to say after that? Oh, brother, this guy stinks! That's all I could say. Ladies and gentlemen, we go back to the Gus Buster Umbrella Hotline right now, and we bring on Charles Gorman. Charles. Anybody home? Charles. All right, we'll come back to you. The big fella writes in. He's got a super chat for us. Big fella says, Coward has gone full clickbait. The guy's voice belongs in the spam folder of our inbox. The whole Fox Sports Network are full of these clowns. Big fella weighing in. It's just, it's disingenuous what was said. 
Because it there's just no way you could accurately say that. If you're someone who talks for a living in the sports field, there's just no way. Sports media field. Another legend is on the line right now as we hopefully receive the return of Chiefs fan at some point. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, I, I just ruined it. I just ruined it. As we hopefully see the return of Charles, we have Chiefs fan on the line. Hello, Chiefs fan. Yo, uh, I didn't watch what he said, but I watched the first five minutes of your stream, and I'm like, how old is he now, Colin? I don't know how old he is. 50? 55? Mm -hmm. All as I know is he's either smoking some good stuff or after he hit age 40, his brain just went to, like, being age 80, having uh, thoughts of an 80-old man screaming at the moon or something. But, like, uh, as my thing in the bottom says, I hope NC State wins it all. Uh, it'll be nice for NC State to win it all. Villanova won it back in 85 as the eighth seed. I would love to see NC State win it all. Uh, mainly because they beat the Tar Heels to get in, and they constantly beat people, and they beat Marquette. And everyone thought, oh, that's an easy game for Marquette. And then they took down the bad guys that took out your Houston team. They took down Duke. Mm -hmm. And now they got two juggernauts left to face and a team everyone else hates. Bama, which everyone else hates. UConn and Purdue, the juggernauts. So, so you're, you're rooting for NC State. Now, Chiefs fan, will you watch any of the Final Four games at the Denny's you work at? Oh, no. I got that weekend off. I nice. Basically, I, I, I basically worked Easter weekend, and I'm like, I work Easter weekend, but Final Four weekend, you could kid, I basically told my boss this, and she told me that said language because I was right in front of a few customers. I basically right. – I'm working 12-hour shifts on Easter weekend. You can kiss my ass. I'm not working on Final Four weekend. Now, Chiefs fan, let me ask you this. is it, Was Denny's open on Easter? Were you working Denny's on Easter? Yeah, for a few hours. Uh, nice. I I also told her that Monday night, I am not work. I, on that Monday night, I am not working. I'll come in with five hours of sleep on the Tuesday because I want to watch that championship game no matter who it is. Amen, Chiefs fan. Great call. Appreciate you. Let's go back to Charles Gorman. Charles. Charles, you making that chicken soup? I will check back. Hopefully he calls back soon. I mean, I really could use some of it. Right, Loski? I need some of your mama's chicken soup. Super chat from Luppy who writes in. Luppy says, just not an educated statement. I don't know how he stays relevant. Can't wait for this draft. Luppy, I can't wait for the NFL draft. Just don't take Brock Bowers at 10. If they take Bowers at 10, I won't be I won't be furious. I just would not prefer that to be the course of action. Ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't signed up for my Patreon yet, you're missing out. Bonus content's there, early release the shows, Discord access, name in the countdown, all that and more. Famous Jones just became our most recent Patreon member. He signed up during the show. Shout out to you, Famous Jones. Appreciate your support. Back to the calls we go. Angelo is with us now on the line. Hello, Angelo. Hey, Jake. Big fan, man. First time caller. Welcome aboard. Thanks for calling. Thank you, man. You got a great career ahead of you. And um, I want to bring up something that I observed last year and maybe the past couple of years is uh, Robert Sala. And I noticed on the sideline, you know, he doesn't have a cheat sheet in front of him. He's always kind of silent. I think he relies on his other coaches more. And I'm more of the, the kind of guy that wants a Sean McVay that has that, you know, the Shanahan's, the Andy Reid's, that they are in charge. They are constantly communicating. Every time I look at Salah on the sideline, he's just, he has that look. He's just kind of silent. So I want to see your take um, on that. And plus, I believe Joe Douglas, regardless of this season, we can all agree that every decision he makes, we're all kind of on board. You know, I think for the, the majority of the decisions he makes, we're all pumped up. The only 
head scratcher last year was Will McDonald, but we'll kind of see how that pans out. But for the most part, maybe a miss on Makai Becton. Um, but I, I think we need to keep Joe Douglas for the long term. And I think really the hot seat is, is on Robert Sala. I just want to get your take on that, that type of head coach that is more involved in the game instead of Robert Sala, who's more, he kind of takes a back seat and lets his other coaches call, call plays and stuff like that. Well, first off, to your point on Douglas and Sala there, though, who hired Sala, right? So does Joe Douglas get to hire another coach if this season doesn't go the way we need it to go as Jet fans? And there is going to be calls for change in the coach. Does this GM get to hire another coach? Has he done enough to get another shot at hiring a coach would be the question. We'll see what happens. But again, I, I think Joe Douglas, he kind of has that that bargain chip, right? Everything he does, it's it, it comes with a bargain. Like he 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 gets those bargain deals. And um I kind of like that. And then he, he's not afraid to spend money when he has to. Um but as far as as Sala goes, I mean, is that have you noticed that on the sideline where he's more of the kind of silent type and doesn't have a cheat sheet in front of him, like really actively involved in the play calling and you know, you you watch Sean McVay or Andy Reid on the sideline. They are involved. It, you, they con- they're constantly talking. You look at Robert Sala. He just has that kind of look like, well, I hope they're, you know, I don't know. Okay, I agree with what they're doing. There, there are moments he gets very fired up, and we've seen it. I, I think it's a fair criticism because ultimately he deserves to be criticized and now until they win. Uh, I, I, I hope – just like Todd Bowles clearly has improved as a head coach, Robert Sala now with another year with his quarterback back, going through what happened last year. Like I, I, I hope that he's just overall better as a head coach. I don't know if it's him like not doing anything on the sideline. Like he's making the the in game decisions. He's on the headset talking with both of the coordinators. So I know he's doing things. It looks like he's not doing anything because. He's a defensive-minded guy, and the offense was trash. So it's like, that's not his forte. He couldn't really overstep and, you know, like take over for Hackett. That was never going to happen. I also think because Hackett was not on the sideline, it kind of looks like he's doing less. You know, he could be talking to Hackett. We don't know. I know he yeah. is. Like, we, it's not like we could see him having a conversation with a coach, but I think it's fair. I mean, look. Sal has got to win this year. And if he doesn't, like all, everything you're saying is fair to criticize him for. But here's the thing. He's a player's coach. I think the players buy into what, you know, he speaks. He's a good motivator. You saw that on Hard Knocks last year. He's a good public speaker. Um, they never again, quit on him either. I mean, they won three yeah. of their final five games. You know, they, you know, they, they it, it's not like this team was two and 15. You know, they, they were seven and 10. And with average quarterback play, you could very easily find three more wins. See, I just don't know if I see the intelligence. I think that's when it comes down to, you know, you look at Bill Belichick, uh, you, you know, you see an intelligent coach that is going to outsmart you. I don't know if Robert Sala is ever going to outsmart you. He might rely on his offensive coordinator to outsmart. I think that's the, the kind of thing we're looking at. He's a good players coach. Is he going to outsmart you? Maybe not. Um, but anyway, let's talk about the draft. Um, I think nowadays you're looking at um, any player can be a boom. You see, see what Brock Purdy, Mr. Irrelevant. When you get a chance to trade down, and I feel like this in any draft, to, a, to inquire picks, you got to do that. So I would, I would imagine Joe Douglas is looking to trade down. You know how cheap he is. He wants a second-round pick. You know, but again – if the need is there, the best player available, if he's number one on our board, I wouldn't mind taking it. Now, now if, if Brock Bowers is the pick, I, I would lean more towards Joe Douglas trading down because he has two tight ends right now. Is that really a need? I don't know. Yeah, um, but here's the thing, Angelo, and I appreciate the call, man. Please call back. Good to get another first-time caller. I, I think they would like to trade back. I think most teams prefer to trade back. Who's coming up? Right, everyone loves the idea of trading back and still getting a bunch of picks. Who's coming up? If you could trade back, I would. I, I just I need to know the teams that are coming up. You got to hope that there's some love for Penix and Knicks. 
Maybe it's all offensive players in the first nine picks or just one defensive player in the first nine picks, and someone's trading up for Jared Burse or for the top corner in this draft. You could see that maybe. Dave says, Bowers ain't coming here. I don't think we know that, Dave. The Jets were interested in Michael Mayer a year ago. Why wouldn't we think they'd be in on Bowers? King Lowski's watching the show. Oh, baby, Lowski. Yes, 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 yes. I need that damn chicken soup, Charles. I hear them damn pots and pans sizzling in there. Shout out to the King. He's been a Asmaniac channel member for seven months. Thank you, King. Shout out to all our Asmaniacs. Another great way to support what we got going on here on the channel. Dark Knight Steve, one of the greats, a secret agent himself. Lord is run out of content, which is why he spews nonsense about the Jets. I'm going to enjoy watching him choke on our receipts in 2024-2025. I love it, Dark Knight Steve. How about this? Snowball channel member for seven months. The bar needs to be set higher this year. AFC champions. Best of luck at the new place, Jake. Snowball, thank you. Appreciate that. Yes, bar should be set higher. I agree. But there's steps to it. Make the playoffs a step one. Ideally, it's win the division so it's a home playoff game. If the Jets get to an AFC title game and lose an arrowhead, we're going to call that a failed year? I can't go that far. But I see what you're saying. Dark Knight Steve, he's been a channel member for seven months as well. If I send Charles the Tupperware, can he send me and King some soup? That's a great question. Well, Charles is actually on the line right now. It looks like he has finished whatever he was doing. So we'll go to Charles Gorman right now. What's up, Charles? I just had some of my mom's famous chicken soup. I'm actually ready to give you the recipe now, if you like. Uh, please. Okay, so write this down. She starts with a live chicken. You have to pull okay. all the feathers out, but... Try not to kill it in the process. Then you drop it into a boiling pot along with two tablespoons of motor oil to be sure it's not the synthetic type. That stuff will set the kitchen on fire. <laughs> the chicken's going to scream a little, but that's good. When it opens its mouth, you're going to squirt the seasoning into its beak. The little bastard will gag on it and take <laughs> it all in. Once the chicken stops screaming, watch as it releases its bowels and the water turns pink. Put on heavy-duty gloves and squeeze the chicken until you get all the fluids out, <laughs> and then you just add two cups of prune juice and let it sit for two days. Reheat, and you're ready to go. Thank you, Charles. All right, well, we got the recipe, folks. A little weird, not what I thought. Uh, hey, Charles, I need <laughs> some more of that chicken soup. But we have figured it out, all right? You just got it there. Hit the chicken soup emoji if you're an asthmatiac. We added that one. In honor of Charles. Unbelievable. Luppy's got a super chat for us. Cha-ching from Luppy. Bill only won with a great quarterback. Defensive head coaches only win with top QBs. Yeah, look. You either have a quarterback or you don't. I've, I've said this. I, especially in today's NFL. Most of the coaches happen to be offensive-minded guys. Doesn't mean you can't win. When you're a defensive head coach, D'Amico Ryan said C.J. Stroud. You don't think the Jets would be in a better spot if they had C.J. Stroud instead of Zach Wilson? So that matters too, as we know. Arizona Jet writes it. It's a full circle season. Excited to see what J.D. does. We'll get a quarterback, a tackle, wide receiver, running back. If this draft is good, these rookies will contribute instantly. Look, it, it, when you're talking about the 10th pick in the draft, that guy's got to be like a contributor. Unless it's an offensive lineman and then they're that sixth man. But the idea that the Jets in their history will still linemen at 10 and that guy's not going to see the field, have you paid any attention? I like the take, Arizona. Thanks for being a channel member. And as Maniac for seven months, a lot of people using their free Super Chat a month today. Wow, look who's actually on the line right now. Ladies and gentlemen, is it the real Charles Gorman? Hello, Charles. Gator, you son of a bitch. <laughs> uh... uh <laughs> Uh, I just came back from having dinner with my family. Uh, we had chicken cutlets and baked potato and corn. And, and, I had and, and that's it. No chicken soup. No. What, Charles, what's going on in the household? 
We have breaded chicken cutlets with corn, with baked potatoes, and I had artichokes. Where's the chicken soup? Only when it's like really cold out and when it's like a really good to have a warm. Food. I mean, it's, yeah. it's cold and rainy today. Yeah, well, my mom decided not to make it, so she makes what she makes us. You gotta, you gotta uh, bring your mom to the camera one of these days. We gotta get, we gotta interview her. That's if she's up to it. Uh, I can't force her to do it, you know. I feel like she anyway, would share the recipe see, with her fans. As you can see underneath my title, let's go Yankees, baby. That's Five right. and zero. Oh, Juan Soto going Charles, solo. What happens first? The Yankees lose a game, or you have chicken soup? I say Yankees lose a game. Really. Yeah, my mom's not going to make chicken soup for quite a while, but that's okay. Anyways, enough with the chicken soup crap. Uh, Colin Cowher is an idiot. I don't know why he still has a job. I think he's a blowhard. I think he's one of the biggest dirtbags in sports media. I'll take Stephen A. Smith, who even though he has his moments, over Colin Cowher any day of the week. Yeah, Charles, I appreciate the call. Uh, Stephen A. actually had some nice things to say, I, th I think, about the Jets today. I, don't know, I didn't see it. I saw Boy Green tweeted a clip out. I'll watch it later. Man, I, I'm starting to get concerned about this chicken soup thing, guys. It doesn't sound like Charles is having it anytime soon. It's not good. A couple super chats to get into here. They're right back to your calls. Breakdown writes in, Cowherd is a goof. But I take his point. If skills equal, a quarterback who spends free time on film will outperform one who has more divided attention. Yeah. That's if you're, but that's insinuating Aaron Rodgers is not 100% committed to playing football. When he's in season, he's 1,000% committed to football. Yeah, obviously, if you're a quarterback who doesn't spend as much time preparing as someone who does, you take that guy if the skill level is equal. That's not what he was saying, though. He was saying, well, you know, Rodgers doesn't really care. He's not as locked in. He's not watching film. That's not true. We know this is not true. His teammates have told you this. His coaches have told you this on and off the record. So what are we doing here? Do Rhino writes in with a super chat. You know your boy's a Texan fan, but I always support my guy, Jake. Hope you guys have a great season. Do Rhino, appreciate you. We'll see you week one. Texans, Jets at MetLife. I can feel it. Monday Night Football. Fire up the Neil Sprinter. We're headed out. I'm telling you, though, I, I do see uh, that game. If not the season opener, I think that could very easily be one of the primetime games the Jets play this year. Think about it last year. They had a random primetime game against the Raiders and Chargers. They can't all be divisional games. I, I could see Jets-Texans in primetime this year. I'm looking forward to that. Mike Rubino, he's been an asthmaniac for one month. Jake, be careful. I think that second Charles is a replicant. You mean to tell me you don't think I realized that that was not actually Charles who called in there? I appreciate it, Mike. Thanks for looking out for me. Oh, man. Let's get back to your calls. Hopefully we say this name right. We try every time, and sometimes we get it right. Sometimes we don't. Aurora. Up next. Hello, Aurora. Hello, Jake. How are you? How did is get, it back up in New York? Did, did I get it right, though? Let's start there. Yes, you did. All right, let's go. I'm getting better at this. You know I'm not good with names. Yeah, no, you're good. I, I still have love for you. So anyway, how are you? How's New York? Uh, it's very wet and rainy, so I needed to run some errands earlier, and good thing I had my Gus Buster umbrella. But no, it's, it's been good so far. I've, I've had so much unpacking. I haven't really been able to truly enjoy it just yet. Good. Well, Texas misses you, of course. Believe me, I, I will miss Texas in, in enormous amount. I already do. It's always welcome. And unfortunately, I'm probably going to have a new neighbor. Um, I don't know if you've been seeing with comments that Alon looks like he's moving to Frisco area, Plano. So I'll be hanging out at the Jets bar with him. We do not Just care. pray for me, guys. Just please. <laughs> we do with not him. care. <laughs> But anyway, with the media, I, I don't like listening to the normal ESPN folks. I just, to me, it kind of, the narrative has not changed with the Jets just because our record hasn't really changed. 
it we haven't had proof in the pudding there's always been excuses and everything like that but i think right now this is a win or we're rebuilding type season or uh, again next year it's just it's just way it is we have to win this year uh make the playoffs win one game at least to at least secure those jobs and everything and just kind of going as it is but I'm kind of want to switch gears a little bit. I'm kind of disappointed to see that Irv Charles, or not Irv Charles, um, what's his name? Justin uh, Hardy. Yeah, good point. I, I was going to talk about that and forgot to mention it. Yeah, Justin Hardy's no longer. And I, that's, I'm, I mean, it would be interesting to see with the new kickoff rule on how the special teams is going to get affected. Um, because I think it's such an overlooked piece and ball placement is really important right there. Um, in regards to where we're at in the field and those, if we have that home run threat, like Brees Hall kind of stepping in and taking the balls back, be great to see, but I'd just be interested to see on how the special teams is going to adapt. Yeah. I think, I think it's a significant loss. It's a great call because you had new rules that are, you know, prioritizing importance on kickoffs. The the one the one thing that I, I hope this means that the Jets are comfortable letting him go is that they do think Irv Charles is ready for a bigger role. And I also hope it means they bring back Ashton Davis, too, who's a valuable special teams player. And he's he's still out there. So uh, I'm, I'm hoping if they're going to lose Hardy, they could keep Davis because you're talking about two really good special teams players that are potentially not on your team next year. Yeah. And I think that really can shape our special teams and where our balls are placed. Um like, I have confidence in Greg Zerline. I have confidence in Morstead. Um, but it'd just be very interesting right now on how that will be affecting our game. Because it's a it's an element that people oversee and overlook. And going with the draft talk, I am hands down wanting to trade back. And I want to recoup our second round pick. And I want to go a weapon and O-line or vice versa, uh, O-line then a weapon. Um, that's where I'm at right now. I agree. Am I, I am I allowed to, to? So you're not a Bowers boy, but if you were, is that term deemed offensive to women, or can a can can a a a non male be a Bower boy? Is that allowed? Okay, so this is where I'm at. I want a playmaker. So if you are a wide receiver and you're a playmaker, I want you. If you're a tight end and you're a playmaker, I want you. We need playmakers, um, and that's where I stand. I'm not – I haven't seen enough film of Bowers, so I can't really make a determination of that. So you're not if a I, Bowers Am I going to hate the pick? I'm going to If I'm gonna hate the pick if we pick at 10. That's where I, I'm at right now. If we pick at 10, I'm not going to like the pick no matter what. Even if it's I a wide receiver. Have, Even if it's like Roma Dunze. I think they should trade back. I really think they need that second-round pick. I think they need that depth element. I do too. I just I don't know if they're going to be able to find a team that's going to give them that. That's what I'm trying to warn Jet fans. Like I, I think Douglas would trade back if he could. I think it's easier said than done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm hands down trade back. I even I just I I'm concerned that we're gonna even though I like McDonald and I think he's gonna be a good player and we he, we haven't unlocked the full potential. Is that it? Still was a reach pick. Yeah, that's that is what I'm afraid of right now. I'm afraid of it being a reach pick, um, and th that's the concern. I, even if it's moving back two slots and recouping a third instead, but then using the the two thirds in and trading back up into the second, there's there's logic there of doing that, and I'm okay with that. I just I really want us. There's so much depth in this draft. In certain uh, in certain spots and everything. So I what really if they want trade to... up? Are, are you anti trade up if you want a playmaker? What if they're like, we love Marvin Harrison or Malik Neighbors? We can get him. <laughs> I would say I would say Marvin Harris. I would be okay with. But besides that, I don't. They, they shouldn't be trading up for a quarterback. No, uh, only a, only a weapon. I'm only talking about a playmaker. Yeah, only a weapon. I, I Neighbors is. I, I still. I have it's so the debate right now is that. Which are they? You're gonna see it being O line heavy in the top ten, or you're gonna see it being playmaker in the top ten. I think that's where it's at. I, I hope I hope it's offensive line or receiver. I just I, I'm not on board with tight end at ten. Yeah, I'm not. So now, if they trade up, though, you know what it's gonna sound like draft night. Uh. <laughs>
Get ready, Jet fans. Great call by Aurora there. Love that. By the way, I have to check the uh, latest Jake Asman channel analytics. But we went from 97% male to 96% male, meaning 4% of our audience is now female, which is great because one of the 4% just called in there. Tremendous. Doug on the couch. He's in the 96%. Hello, Doug. How are you doing today, Jake? Doug, I actually was thinking about you today. I need to, I, so I'm in the process of ordering a couch right now because I didn't ship my couch back uh, from Houston with me. So any advice on the type of couch I should be looking for? I mean, this is like, it's the three seats, like three spots, but like it's, it's worn in because I lay on it so much. I sit on it so much. If you, didn't, if you guys didn't know that, I, I'm on a couch a lot. So I like a nice worn in couch, but like it's brown. I don't know. Maybe don't like get a, one that doesn't show stains, that's a good one to get. Like, you never know. Douglas. Spills, spills happen. Yeah, yeah no, of course, of course, of course. I know what you meant. So, I, I, I like a couch. It's not too big. Like, maybe, like, that's a medium sized couch. I don't know how big your apartment is, but like a nice medium sized couch for the living room is good. I need, I need one with a futon because I have people visiting. So, you gotta, you gotta have yeah. flexibility. That I get. So, I get a like, medium sized food, like couch, but like has the futon, the pull out bed. That's yep. what I would do. All right. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll keep that in mind as I continue my search. Colin Coward's a dumbass. That's what I got to say. I don't even see the start of the show because I was walking home from work, but Colin Howard's a dumbass. Sorry for that profound language, but I think I speak the truth. Doug, thank you for the call. Ladies and gentlemen, Doug. Gator wants to know, is Doug planning on having a toilet installed on the third cushion? He probably should. Logically, that at this point, that just makes too much sense, no? Today's Jake Asman show is presented by our friends at Huga House. If you want to wear the hat that Aaron Rodgers is always wearing, if you want to wear the hat that I'm wearing often, go to HugaHouse.com. Get your vintage-inspired hats 15% off when you use that promo code Asman at checkout. The hats are comfortable. They come in all different colors, shapes, and designs. It's not just Rodgers who rocks it. Shane Gillis is a Huga House man as well. So check it out. Huga House, H-U-E-G-A, House.com. Promo code ASMIN at checkout, and you can get yourself 15% off and dress yourself in style. More comments, questions. We got open phone lines for anyone who wants in on the conversation. Let's see what you guys are thinking. More comments we shall read. We've gotten, I think, so far five new Asmaniacs this episode alone. So welcome to everyone who is now an Asmaniac. Um... A couple of these comments about Doug's couch are not exactly YouTube appropriate here, guys. Luppy says, Jake, is that the longest you talk to a girl in reference to the call we just had with Aurora? Uh, Luppy, I was going to say, just ask your wife, but I'm not going to say that. That'd be mean. That'd be mean. Hater says, I lived in Houston almost 10 years, still miss Texas, great state. If it wasn't for work, I'd still be there right now, believe me. I love Houston. Love Texas. Cost of living speaks for itself. Weather, all that. But New York's home. And for this show and what I'm doing with ESPN New York and Mad Dog Sports Radio and ESPN National, had to be back in New York. David writes in, will McDonald lose the staff after bulking up in the offseason? I hope not. I, I think it's more about him being able to gain a step not lose a step. I think they want him to be able to get off blocks quicker. Like his raw athleticism is going to be there. We're talking about a guy who just probably needs to get stronger. So he could, he could do other pass rush moves. But I, I'm not concerned about that. Look, I, I put my faith in the Jets defensive coaches when it comes to Will McDonald's development. I think they've look, the Jets don't earn the benefit of the doubt on a lot of things. I think when it comes to developing defensive linemen, they do. So until they make a mistake, I'm going to assume Will McDonald's going to end up being a pretty good player. Um, Lawrence writes, same reason Jets always got killed with penalties. Both teams commit them, only the Jets get called. Well, I'll tell you what. Get ready for the Jets to probably be um, <laughs> absolutely boned by this hip drop rule that 
the NFL now has in place. Like, I'm fully expecting the Jets to be screwed over. Just a fact of life. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Appreciate everyone tuning in. We're going to try and make this month one of the greatest months of content that we have ever done in the history of the show. Because we're talking about NFL draft, our mega cast at the end of the month, Jets having the number 10 pick, having Mr. Irrelevant as well. It's going to be fun. Gary with a super chat. Uh Uh-oh. Gary writes in, we should draft Bowers at 10. Gary, should we, though? Should we? Mr. Bonesy says, how many times have you eaten Chipotle since you moved in? Well, yesterday was my first day, so I've had it one time so far. Tonight will probably be two. (laughs) Let's be real. Omar writes in, hey, Jake, I hope that we make a move on Boyd. Yeah, me too. I don't know how realistic that is, but the longer he's out there, just maybe. Oklahoma says, I think this is the most popular NFL team YouTube channel. It's not, but I really appreciate the kind words, Oklahoma. I'll tell you what, we have the best callers out of any NFL team YouTube channel on this show. I take pride in that. I don't know how many... uh, I don't know how many fan bases have a V-man that calls them. Or a Charles. Or a Neil. Or a Gator. Or a King Lowski. I mean, I could keep going. We'd be here all day. All right? Or a Chiefs fan. Or Craig in Australia. Or 12-year-old Connor. Or Doug on the couch. Or Dre in the office who had a heart attack and called the show later that day. Or Johnny. Or Ricky NY. Shout out to Ricky NY. Wearing one of his hats he gifted me around the holiday season. Or Rob the Jet Fan or Snowball. Or where's Scott at, by the way? Or VR. Or Aurora or Lini. Super chat from the big fella or a big fella. I mean, come on now. Did you know DJ Burns started his college career at Tennessee? We still have a horse in this race. Down with Purdue and that 7-4 Charmin rap piece of trash. Yes, I'm bitter. Uh, Not the biggest fan of uh, Edie, are you, big fella? I can't blame you. That was a tough one. Man, I'm rooting for NC State. I mean, it's it's the best story. I mean, how could you not, right? I don't have a dog in the fight. In our Asmaniac bracket challenge, I'm already eliminated pretty much. I had Houston winning it, so that's it. So. Uh, I'm with you. DJ Burns. Let's go. Guy looks like he should be like an NFL offensive lineman. What a story. Arizona Jet up next on the show. What's up, Arizona Jet? Hey, how's it going, Jake? It's been a while since I called. Yeah, uh, where I you been, been, man? Where you been? I, I've been working a lot. I usually catch a show after the fact. But, um, yeah, I like all the, the hype we're getting again. Uh, off-season uh, champ, champions again. We're, like, really killing it this off-season. So, of course, you're going to get haters like Nick Wright and Colin Coward. I mean, these guys are just, they don't have anything, they don't have any good takes. So the only takes they have are controversial takes. And the only people to pick on it are Jets fans because they obviously know that we're the most passionate fans and that's going to get a lot of reaction. It's going to be good for them. So that's the only thing they have to talk about is basically bad stuff. And everybody hates Aaron Rodgers and people are pretending like he won't be good. But like what you said, even if he's like top 15, this team could be really, really good. We can make a playoff run. We could go deep into the playoffs. I don't see anybody who's saying otherwise is lying to themselves or they're not watching the same sport because this is obviously a good roster with one quarterback away from being what we need to be to be able to beat Kansas City. I think we could hang with Kansas City. I think we could hang with, with the Bengals or anybody in the AFC and potentially make a Super Bowl. I don't Anybody who says different is just a Jet hater for real. Look, health is the biggest thing, but that could be said about a lot of teams. But you can't look at this roster and not feel like it's one of the five most talented rosters in the league. Like, just objectively speaking, name me na- yeah. name me five teams with more talented rosters than what the Jets have on paper. Exactly. And I get it. Paper, obviously, is not the end-all, be-all. But, like, we're talking about a team that has a 
has a floor of seven wins with the worst quarterback situation in football the last two years, now has Aaron Rodgers and Tyrod Taylor. Like, you're going to win yeah. more games. And, and I'm excited. I'm excited about Joe Douglas. I honestly say, like, a, like I said earlier in my, my chat, my super chat, this is a full circle like season. And Joe Douglas, I think will this draft will determine him being here beyond 2024. If he hits another home run in this draft, and it's like the Sauce Gardner, uh, you know, JJ, uh, Garrett Wilson draft, like even if he doesn't like uh, draft a, a offensive lineman, I don't see him drafting Brock Bowers. I see him draft either trading up for a receiver or trading back, or like what you said. Uh, somehow getting back into this, uh, using our picks. I guess we got two number fours. We could trade back into the second round or a third round, third round. So like, even if we don't get a second rounder, maybe we can get an extra third rounder. But I, I, th I honestly think that Joe Douglas is going to hit a home run in this, this draft. I think he's not drafting Bowers. I just don't see it. I, I see a receiver or I see that trade back for the second or third rounder. Yeah. I look, I, I hope you're right. And they either are trading back or they're trading up. It's for one of the receivers. Good call, Arizona. Call back soon. I, I don't think Bowers is completely off the table, though. I don't. I think it's too risky, though. But, look, if they take him, I, I'm going to root for him, obviously. I hope he's amazing. I, I hope he's Travis Kelsey. But I'm going to be very hard on him right away. Like, his his floor has to be he's already one of the better tight ends in the league as a rookie if you're taking him at number 10. I want everyone to realize that. There's no grace period for Brock Bowers. He's got to be very good right away because you already have a very good tight end. Tyler Conklin's a good player. And if you take Bowers at 10, you're saying goodbye to Jeremy Ruckert. You're burning a third-round pick. So, I'm just – I'm not on board. I think there's a better way they could use that 10th pick. Hawk says you're gonna gain 20 pounds from pizza and Italian food, just like the players that come here from elsewhere. I know, man. I gotta hit the gym. You're not wrong. I mean, I, since I've been here, pizza, bagels, breakfast sandwiches. I mean, it's nonstop. Benny says Adam Gase is Kyle Shanahan before Kyle Shanahan. Yeah, from the same guy who said Aaron Rodgers was dumb. Also, famously said this. And Jet fans are clueless. I mean, they're dopes. They don't know anything. This is a really good hire. Gase is a great coach. Gase is a great coach. Okay, Adam Gase is Kyle Shanahan before Kyle Shanahan. Gase is a great coach. Gase is a great coach. You Jet fans are clueless. You're dopes. If you're a Jet fan, you're a dope. All right? That according to Colin Cowherd. More of your calls right now. Ladies and gentlemen, we bring on one of our favorites. The great Luppy has called in. Hello, Luppy. Hey, Jake. I'm sorry. I was a little misunderstanding. That was a great comeback, though. <laughs> no, I, I love you, the Luppy. Longest, the longest I met on your show, because she was very informed. It was awesome. So oh, yeah. Good. I mean, I, we, we, we I will say. We need yeah. more of that. Love yeah. it. me up. So I'm sorry. There was a little confusion. Me being a little no, stupid. You're that, good. That you're good. Correctly. Sorry about that, but yeah. Listen, O line, O line, O line. She's absolutely right. Trade back, team trade back. I know you are the same way. You know we got it. We got it. We got to protect Aaron. Uh, no, we're not going to win without him. I know that Tyrod can get us through some games. We're not going to win without Aaron. He is. You got to put him on a pedestal. We got to protect him. Bubble wrap. Whatever we got to freaking do. And the, the draft is the bubble wrap. We need to do that. It's nice to have a block by Brock Bowers. Unless uh, JD pulls some of his magic out of his butt, which would be great. And it, and then he gets Bowers later on, like she said. It's just there really is no other option than you get an offensive line. Uh, you got you got to build on that. You have to protect Aaron Rodgers because he's a defensive head coach. He's questionable on what he's doing, and you need to have that offensive piece because our offensive coordinator really is not going to be the coordinator when Aaron's there. That's know? right. That's so, right. And Luppy, you're spot on about um, our our female callers. I mean, we don't get a ton, but the ones you do call, whether it's Aurora, who called in earlier, or Lini, right. some some of our best calls. Yeah, what happened to the sneaker girl? <laughs> uh, she was in the comments I saw earlier. Yeah, she don't call in anymore. No, I don't know what happened. Well, let's go Jets. Yeah. Love it, Luppy. Appreciate you. Uh, Johnny, Jacob, you had Chinese takeout yet. Maybe that's tonight, Johnny. Maybe you've inspired me. How about this comment from JJ? 
You got some nerve, JJ. Jake, A-Rod has done nothing to earn your support and this rant today. Let's see him win a few games before we build him a statue. Me defending him is not saying build a statue, but for you to act like he's done nothing to earn my support as a Jet fan, are you even a Jet fan? Do you realize what you have watched at quarterback for your entire life? This guy wanted to be here. He's one of the five greatest quarterbacks of all time. He took a $35 million pay cut, the largest pay cut in team sports history. He's done nothing to earn my support. Did you watch Hard Knocks? Did you listen to the conversations I had with some of his teammates on this show? Like C.J. Mosley? He's done nothing to earn my support. Yeah. Great take, J.J. One of your best. Just like when you called in 30 minutes into free agency, angry the Jets didn't make any big splashes. How'd that work? He's done nothing to earn my support. Are you nuts? How quickly you forget. What Zach Wilson, Tim Boyle, Trevor Simeon, Joe Flacco, what these guys look like at quarterback for the Jets. Sam Darnold, Greg McElroy, Tim Tebow, Christian Hackenberg. I, I'll mention him. He was a second-round pick. We didn't even see him play in a regular season game. He didn't even take a snap. And you're going to tell me that Aaron Rodgers has done nothing to earn my support. Who should I support then? Zach Wilson? Go fire Douglas and Salah again for the 20th time, JJ. That, that will work. I mean, what's your plan at quarterback? I'm sure, because you know all, J.J., you've never been wrong. Everything you say is gospel at the quarterback spot. Oh, let, let's call LaFleur LaFleury, as if Zach Wilson wasn't the reason why LaFleur was trash. Please. Kellen Clemens, like, do I need to keep going? All right. My first year watching the Jets was in the early to mid-2000s. I have seen, like, two good quarterback seasons in my lifetime. Chad and Ryan Fitzpatrick. That's it. Chad in 06. Fitz in 2015. Top 10 NFL statistical quarterback seasons. And you're going to sit here and tell me that Aaron Rodgers hasn't done anything to earn our support as Jet fans. Are you nuts? Are you, are, are, are you that ignorant? Or that forgetful of your history as a Jet fan. And you're a season ticket holder. That's why I don't understand this, JJ. You're a real Jet fan. I'm not knocking you. You go to every game. I don't get how you feel this way about the team. I don't get it. Green and White Pinstripe says, how much to ban JJ for life? Whoa. Why don't we ask him? JJ has called in. What's up, JJ? What's going on? You know what? How much to ban me for life? I, I think that like 50 bucks, 50 bucks should do it. No, right? you're worth more than 50 bucks. No, uh, 50 bucks, 50 bucks. I want to see how nope. many super chats are going to come in. I would have taken. I'm I just taken. trying to get you. Listen, you live on the Upper East Side now. I used to uh, I used to date a girl who lived on the Upper East Side. There's you got the wrong side, but that that's not where I live. I thought you said, what is it? The West Side? I'm on the West Side of the city, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I used to work on the West Side. I used to work on 86th Street, so I know the West Side pretty well, too. Anyways, that's not the point. The point is, all I'm saying is, right, we just haven't we, we haven't seen A-Rod play yet. I just want to see him play. That's I agree, but saying. it's not it's not his fault. He got hurt. Like, the idea, you, your comment was, he hasn't earned, he hasn't earned my support. Of course he's earned my support. I You realize how bad the Jets quarterback situation has been? This guy wanted to be here and has done and said all the right things. He got hurt. It happens. He also worked True. his ass off to try and come back and and uh, and and play for this team this past year. Yeah, true. But here's my only my only thing about A Rod. Right, this is my only complaint about him. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have Nathaniel Hackett, Alan Lazard, Billy Turner, Tim Boyle. None of those guys would have been on the team. That's other so than I'm Lazard. These guys sour. are. On yeah, but these guys are on one-year deals. You think Lazard would have been? Look, I'm not defending Lazard. He was terrible last year, and he quit on the team, and mm -hmm. and I he, it was a terrible signing. But you really think these guys would be uh, like as as bad as they were if Rodgers was out there? Like Billy Turner was a one-year deal. Randall Cobb was there to teach the veterans. Corey Davis retiring and Hardman being a huge bust is why he had to play a bigger role. Like I get I think it. I get we're it. nitpicking, but they, like if that's your only criticism of Rodgers. That's pretty. That's pretty low. We're nitpicking. You know what my criticism of Zach Wilson is? He sucks. That's my criticism. No, you know my criticism whoa, 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 of Tim Boyle listen. is? He sucks. Uh, to say that's pretty low, Nathaniel Hackett is historically 
historically bad. Like he might yes, be the worst. But if Ro- but Rodgers won two MVPs with him as his OC. It's now this hopefully the same thing with the Jets. Yeah, but he won two MVPs with him as the OC. But who was the the head coach who was actually calling the I, plays? I get it, but Rodgers changes every play at the line anyway. He calls his own offense like Peyton and Brady do. True. I'll give you that. I'm not. I'm not debating you. I'm just saying, like, let's just see him play a few games before, you know, we, we look at him as the greatest thing since Jesus. That's all I'm saying. I like Aaron Rodgers. I can't wait for him to play, but I'm still a little salty that we had to sign all these guys in order to make him happy and get here, and then these guys ended up being the detriment to the team last year. That's yeah, but, all I'm saying. But, but like, you're, you're upset over Billy Turner on a one-year deal, or Tim Boyle, who was QB3? Like, he's never playing. Like, he had to play because Aaron Rodgers got hurt and Zach Wilson was terrible. Like, that's why Boyle played in the first place. Like, that's that's really pretty low if that's your criticism. I'm like, to say he's done nothing to earn my support, that's – you got to admit, that's a little ridiculous. Aaron Rodgers has done plenty to earn my support and the support of Jet fans. So no, maybe, maybe it was a little dramatic, but like I said, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a negative guy. What, what can I say? Everybody says I'm negative. Um, now, with that being said, let, let, let's talk a little bit about the draft, right? Uh, are we finally moving in the direction of O line or bust, or is it still is it still up to bait that we we, we might take a wide receiver? Because, like, I don't, I just don't understand why anybody would want anything other than after what we just seen the last. Uh, JJ, I'm gonna let you go because your internet your internet was was going down on you. But you know, to answer what I think you were asking about the draft. I think the Jets are still in their process. I don't think they've made a decision yet. I think they could still go O-line. I think they still obviously could take uh, a Bowers or take a receiver. I think trading up and trading down is still on the table. I, I don't think, because of where they're picking, I don't think you could have a consensus on what you're going to do. It's not like when they were taking Zach Wilson and it was obvious they're taking Zach Wilson. They had the second pick of the draft. You knew Lawrence was going one. Wilson was going to go two. This is different. There's nine players that go before they pick. So I think I think the idea the Jets have already made a decision or there's a consensus on what they're picking. I I I don't think so. I wouldn't go that far. Let's keep rolling with a couple more calls here. Shout out to everyone who's tuned in. Good job by JJ. I'll give him his flowers. At least he calls in. Michael writes in. Actually, hold on. Big fella's got a super chat for us. Let's get caught up and then go right back to your calls. We got a special guest on the line. I could see the Colts coming up if BB is available. Colts trading up for Bowers. Would they do it? That's an interesting thought. They do need probably need another weapon. You would trust Shane uh, Shane Steichen to utilize Bowers. 15 to 10. If the Colts call the Jets and they want to move up from 10 to 15, Jets could get the 42nd pick in the draft. Their second rounder. Would you do it, Jet fans? I would. I would make that deal if that deal is on the table. Michael writes in. Extend JD. Puts all the pressure on Salah, question mark. Why not let Joe Douglas just play out the final year on his contract? Why, why, they don't, why do they need to extend anyone right now? All right. Tyler writes in with a super chat. Rodgers was literally on the field for four snaps. Stop hating. He's literally one of the greatest quarterbacks of our generation. Yeah, I mean, like, to to criticize him for Billy Turner and Randall Cobb, that's so silly. Or Hackett. You don't get Rodgers without Hackett. Peyton Manning and Adam Gase sang Kumbaya together. All right? This is not unique. Because it's Rodgers, it's covered differently because, like, in the eyes of some of the media, he's this villain because they disagreed with his take on COVID, which he ended up being factually right about, which is wild if you think about it. Go look at some of the things Aaron originally said and how they've aged. But he's he's much maligned for a lot of things. But, like, if we're going to nitpick him for Tim Boyle, I mean, come on. Let's stop with that. Uh, you could criticize the Jets for, you know, <laughs> many things. But criticizing Aaron Rodgers specifically? Really? If he doesn't play well this year, he's fair for criticism, obviously. But can he play more than 
four plays before we have the audacity to say he doesn't deserve our support? That's crazy talk. Ladies and gentlemen, choo choo. Hi. Sorry, everybody. Wrong button. Ladies and gentlemen, choo choo. Hold on. There it is. Hi. How are you? Bruce Hall. Oh, that's good. The Lane Train. What's up, Lane? Hey, Jay, Jay, Jay. Um, So, how do you feel about the um draft? Like, who do the Jets pick in the um 21 draft, at the 21st round? Uh, the Jets are picking 10th overall, Lane. Yeah. Um, do you know who else is available? Like, who do we need to to bring and to um keep? Lane, I, I would like them to take either the best available offensive lineman or trade oh, back yeah. and still take the best available offensive lineman. That's personally what I'd like to see them do. Yeah. Um, like, do you think they'll do better this year? I hope so. I You, you, you know, they it, it's hard to do worse than what we watched last year with the pain. Yeah, no, it was terrible. Now, Lane, well, let me ask you yeah. about your Mets. Are you concerned with the 0-4 start? Yeah. They're not doing good. No. Well, why is that? Is it because they have injuries already? That well, they keep not, getting injured. They're not hitting. Where's the offense? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I should see you doing a baseball uh, stream. Would you, you call my be- baseball stream? Yeah, I mean, have you ever thought of doing a baseball stream? I have. Yeah. I, have pl- I plan on doing some baseball content this season. Yeah, I mean, Yankees and Mets, but Yankees swept the Astros four games because I know that you're from there. Now, Lane, let me ask you something. Yeah, last going week, back to the Jets? Yeah, going back to the Jets. You mentioned last week a, a prospect the Jets should take named Knoebel. Did you figure out what that oh, player's name was? His name is Bo Nix. So Bo, and, so Bo Nix is Knoebel. No, I don't know what I was saying. <laughs> but, I mean, do I see him coming, honestly? I don't know. But I would have to wait and see what happens for this year's draft. That's in two weeks already on April 10th. Lane, yeah. thank you for the phone call. Excellent. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen. The lane train. What a call. What a call. Hi. Sorry, everybody. See you next call when we talk about sports again. I really wanted Knobel. I'm upset that Lane didn't know uh, who he was referring to. By the way, I think uh, Lane's coming for Doug's role on the show. We got Lane train on the couch there. I mean, man, I I really wanted Knobel, but I don't know if... uh, I don't know if we're ever going to know who Canova was. Let's go to NY Jets, Florida. Hello, NY Jets. Uh-oh, I don't look at my charts. Just, just for show. Hey, Jake, uh, Bialy's underrated severely. Bialy's. You have Bialy's. it. I don't, know okay. I don't know if you're a fan of those. Uh, I don't know to follow the lane train call. Uh, I think we're going to know the identity of Canova draft night when he calls in and says, yes, player X is Canova. So when, you know, when we make our picks, I think Lane will fi- finally give us, solve the mystery of Noble on draft night. But, uh, Jake, I- I'm willing to go down as far as in the 20s. I really think a lot of these linemen are going to grade out almost at the same grade once you get past maybe Joe Ald. I-, I really think they're all grouped together. I mean, I don't think, like, the the, the slide off or whatever the – the, the rating is going to be similar. I think we can go down to the Eagles at 22. Um, like somebody previously said, the Colts at 15. I'm willing to trade down even twice. And maybe we can honestly get a get get maybe even two firsts if we can work our way back into the first. and Or our first and a high second. Yeah, but this is not Madden, though, man. Like, this is not, this is not fantasy football. Like... It's very tough to do the amount of trades you're suggesting. You want them to trade back tr- twice and they get back into the first round. That's at least three trades right there in one night. 
I mean, you know, I, Joe Douglas has made some good trades. I just don't know how realistic that necessarily is. They might love a player that's there at 10. You got to think about it like this, NY. Like, if they're trading back and they're, and they're getting a lesser quality of player, but they're getting more quantity, that might sound great, but these guys' jobs are on the line. They got to win. So if they think that player at 10's plug and play and can help them right away, if it's a Dunze, let's say, they're going to take him. And if Roma Dunze is there at 10... I'm going to lose my gosh darn bananas. Because that would be awesome. The biggest Joe Douglas truther writes in, Mr. Bonesy. He's a wizard, Jake. He is a wizard, Bones. I just don't know if he's going to make three trades in the first round. Reese says, love the lane train all day. Amen, man. Who doesn't love the lane train? Um, David writes in, do the Jets need one superstar weapon or two to three solid contributors? Well, I, I, I think they need contributors. I, I think they have a superstar weapon. His name is Garrett Wilson. Mike Williams is good. He's coming up the injury, so I think you want a couple other contributors. Aurora writes in, Hey, Bonesy, what Harry Potter house is JD in? Is JD a Hufflepuff guy? Is he a Slytherin? What's the other one? Ravenclaw, and then obviously Gryffindor. Love that. Uh, Mr. Rex says, Lane's new prediction is the Yankees will win 562 games this season. Look, I hope Lane's right. Uh, big fella says Hackett is definitely Slytherin. I mean, Harry was going to be Slytherin, but he asked the uh, sorting hat to put him in Gryffindor. Zach Asman watches the show. Is watching the show. Nice apartment. When are you coming over to see it? Um. Tom says, go Yankees forever. That'd be the 5-0 and oh, New York Yankees. 5-0. and oh. I will be in the building on Friday for the home opener. Where even if the Yankees lose their next two, they're coming back to New York 5-2. and two. Pretty good. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. A couple more minutes and then we'll wrap here. Bit of a longer show which is all good. Check out the show with Matt O'Leary this morning if you want more content. Got some big guests I'm in the middle of working on. All right. Guests so big, it's going to blow your mind, Jet fans. So be on the lookout for that over the next couple of weeks. I'm excited. Paul has called in. Hello, Paul. How are you, Jake? What's up, Paul? I got a couple of things I want to touch on. Hope you got the time for it. But, uh, did you hear that Zach uh, Zach Wilson put his condo up for sale? Uh, yeah, but that happened like months ago already, Paul. Yeah, right. So you know he's gone regardless. But I guess the whole point of it, my question, second question is, just say we hold on to him for a while. Even like before the trade deadline, is that something that could happen? Because a lot of quarterbacks do get hurt early in the season, so maybe you keep them on the practice squad, or you're not going to get the value when the season starts. That was question one. He's not going to be on the team, Paul. They they will not hold on to him by the trade deadline. He has no value. I can I get it, but hypothetically speaking, if they decide to be that, go that route, would they do something out? Enough! Enough! He's being <laughs> cut, Paul. It's over. He stinks! Stop! Good. I mean, I want, I want him gone. I don't even want him there for training camp. 
I was just curious that if they decided to keep him for some dumb reason, would he still have value if somebody got hurt preseason or before the trade deadline? Just a question. I don't know. No, I don't. I don't think he'll gain any more value. I mean, teams can get him for a seventh round pick right now. They don't want him. He, he, they know the Jets right. are eventually going to have to cut him. So he's going to be cut, or they're going to swap seventh round picks with someone, and the Jets will eat some of the money. So they could say in the PR, "Oh, we got, we were able to get something for him. We traded him." Like, watch. Yeah. That's what will be. That 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 will be the solution. They trade him on day three of the draft, swapping seventh rounders and picking up some of the money. Okay. So another question: If you know this, this whole Joe Douglas thing, what happened this was phenomenal. Again, I feel he made a lot of really good moves in the off season, which we all agree on. But my, and uh -oh. we've seen it already because this is what happens. Say these players that we signed are injury prone, have injury problems. Williams doesn't cut it, things of that nature, because he doesn't fully heal from his ACL, and other players get hurt. But I guess the moral of my story is Tyrod Taylor got hurt last year playing the Jets. The Jets are a number one, you know, top five defense. And I think we all agree the Giants had probably one of the worst offensive lines in the league pretty close to ourselves right and he got hurt for that reason in my opinion because he was scrambling for his life i just don't want the same mistake to happen we still need to beef this whole line we still need to focus on this whole line because you know what if aaron Rodgers goes down god forbid but at least the offensive line is still going to stay healthy. We still have a great shot with Brees Hall. We're still going to have a great shot at winning games with Taylor because he could stay healthy. if He, he got hurt last year because he had a shit offensive line, excuse the mouth, and he played a superior defense, and he got hurt. The offensive line to me just still has to remain everything. I, I'm, I'm – Joe Douglas will do all wrong if that fails again. It, it cannot fail three years in a row. I'm sorry. I appreciate it, Paul. Joe Douglas has had a good offseason. Now he needs a good draft. What a call by Paul. Luppy says, Paul, you're late. He called you for his Uber, by the way. Super chat from Ray Danger. What if Smith plays four games this year? What if Mike Williams doesn't return to form? What if Kinlaw's not good? Are we still building a statue for Douglas? Yeah, I agree. Can we see how the year plays out? Like, I, I, I think that there's some truth to that. And I like Joe D. He's had a very good offseason. But... Now you gotta win, man. We won the offseason many times. Joe D sucks. Like let's let's win. We all suck. It's time. All right, what did Herm say? Hello. You play to win the game. You don't play to just play it. He's right. Now they need to win. Tyrod being the backup with Rodgers is huge. Now, if you said what if Smith plays four games and Williams doesn't return to form, if Williams doesn't return to form, that's okay. Is he serviceable? Do they add another weapon or two in the draft or sign another veteran? Like they, like they have enough. Conklin's a good player. People seem to always forget that when they talk about Bowers. Garrett's Garrett. If you tell me Aaron Rodgers is playing 15 of 17 games, they better make the playoffs. If they don't, there's going to be changes. One last call as we've gone for nearly 90 minutes here on a Tuesday program. Johnny, wrap us up. What's up, Johnny? What's going on, Jake? How you holding up, man? I'm hanging in, man. Thanks for calling. The move, the move's going crazy for you? Yeah, yesterday was rough, but today's been a lot better, so we'll just power through. Good, good, bro. Well, keep it up, man. Glad to get you back in New York, man. Hey, um, quick thing. 
Obi Wan Kenobi from uh, Nassau Community College. We we must get him at ten. Maybe move up and pick him up at three. Hey, yeah. whatever, whatever, whatever. Uh, Lane Kenobi wants, he shall get. <laughs> hey, um, quick thing, man. I know we we've been talking about the Jets and everything. We love the Jets, but we're at that part of the season where it's just mock drafts and mock drafts and mock drafts, right? Oh, but yeah. You'll be hearing this a lot. If we go at 10, you know who I'm getting. Just to piss uh, Boomtown off. Bowers, baby. No, I'm kidding. But um, WrestleMania this weekend, man. Who you got? Are you acknowledging the uh, Tribal Chief? What's uh, what's The Rock's new nickname now, by the way? The Rock's name? Yeah, doesn't he have a new nickname now, right? Oh, uh, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's from back in the day. With him and uh, with Roman Reigns, I can't even think about it right now. Is dude. that the, is that the head of the table? That's not his nickname, right? No, 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 it's not the head of the table. It's like the grandfather or something like that. The grand chief, final boss, the right? grand chief. No, no, I think the, the, he's the grand, the grand chief, if I'm not mistaken, or the great chief or something like that. But who you got, bro? I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I'm not, I'm not a big wrestling guy. Like my uncle and my cousin loved it, and they still follow my friend Dan, who. Um, I'll probably, you know, we're not probably, we'll be the best man at his wedding. He's obsessed with it. But like, I, I don't know. I hear stuff from them. Like but the you final know boss, is the name Rock's been calling himself. But you know who the final boss is, right? Is it Joe Douglas? I hope it is. You know, Joe Douglas has a song that plays when he strikes. Would you like to uh, hear that song? Johnny. <laughs> Stone Cold Joe Douglas. Allen says, is MJF coming to WWE? He rules. MJF from Plainview, Long Island. Grew up in the town next to me. So I like MJF, even though I don't know much about him other than he's from Plainview and Jewish. He's one, he's one of us, member of the tribe. Tom says, Douglas316 says, I just whooped the league's ass in free agency. I love it. We know Joe D could drink, by the way. We all saw the video of Stone Cold Joe Douglas at the Boomer and Geo event last year. Man, draft. It's coming, people. I know it feels far away, but free agency felt far away, and then it just happens, and now... We're just 23 days away from the draft. 23. As maniacs, we'll do it together. Watch the draft with us. Hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you haven't, that goes a long way towards helping us continue to grow. If you want to get gifted a channel membership, make sure you are liking and subscribed and commenting because that's the best way uh, to have the YouTube algorithm be more likely to randomly select you when someone gifts you an Asmaniac membership. On that note, that's going to do it for me. Thank you all so much for taking the time to tune in. It goes a long way. It means a lot. So we will be live in the morning tomorrow. Plan is to have an afternoon stream as well, confirming a time for the Buffalo Jet fan, but expected to be around 5 p.m. Eastern tomorrow. So I'm excited for that. And I will talk to you guys soon. J-E-T-S. Jets, Jets, Jets. Lane Train. What's oh, up, Lane? Hi. How was everything? Yes. Lane? Oh, oh, hi. Did you see Aaron Rodgers on the Patrick McAfee program on the YouTube? What happened? Look, okay. Do you think he should play football for the Jets this year? Or maybe wait until the next time he can play next year. I, I think he should play for the Jets this year, Wade. Did you watch the Charles Gorman show on the YouTube? He has his own channel, and it's really interesting. Oh, Chiefs fan. Oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> let me bring him in. Hey, Charles. Chiefs fan here. I, I can't can see your mouth. Do you collect used bandages? What used bandages? bandages? I have a 1987 Band-Aid from an oh, AIDS-infected yeah. Rock Hudson before he kicked the bucket. Anyway, got to go because my battery is about to run out. No problem. Oh, there's Gator. Are you a personator by profession? No. Chiefs fan is back. Hold on. Do you see me? Um, hmm. I see you, but I don't see you. Yeah, he's frozen. Hey, Charles. Frozen. Yeah, my camera is frozen. Do you see me? Yeah, your camera's yeah, frozen. Your camera. Oh, V-Man's here. Oh, get him in. 
What the fuck is happening here? Oh my God. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Maybe for Jake's show, you could arm wrestle me. Then after we make some coquito and slap <laughs> each other silly, would you be into that? Uh, <laughs> me, uh, it's like the worst impression ever. Oh, there's Rat Diddy. He's but, been uh, chill trying to get in here. Should I ban him? No. Let Chiefs fan in. Let's see him. Am I oh, still frozen? <laughs> yes. Ah, oh, fucking bullshit. <laughs> I just spilled gravy on my nuts. Let me call back. Oh, my God. What? Oh my god. On one hand, I'm really sad because I thought Lane called in. On the other hand, that was an epic gator call. Oh my god, what did we just watch? I thought we were going to get Lane. We didn't get Lane. Thanks again to Gator for one of the most absurd calls I think we've ever seen. I'm back because I wanted to give love to King and Dreams who submitted the Super Chat after we wrapped up, but we love you, King and Dreams. My G. Jake donation towards the Henny Fund. King of Dreams, I appreciate you. The handy will be flowing. But it's more expensive in New York than it is in Texas, so it goes a long way. I appreciate you. Thank you to King of Dreams for his support there. All right, for, for real, that's actually going to end the show. Thanks again, everyone, who tuned in. Please like and subscribe, all that stuff you hear everyone say, because it truly does make a huge difference. And uh, I'm going to go dance like JD did at the wedding I was at. See you guys soon.